I, I received a letter a couple, uh, about a week and a half ago, an email, uh, that I think beautifully illustrates what, what, what God's doing here. Um, it's, a, it's, it's by a couple who is part of a team at this Christian, long-term Christian foster home. And they take in a lot of children, some of whom are, have been severely abused. And they have an incarnational, beautifully incarnational model of ministry where they're committed to meeting the kids where they're at and loving them into wholeness, however long that may take, and doing whatever it takes to, to, to carry that out. This couple tells me that they received a couple, a, 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 a 10-year-old precious girl. I'll call her Rosie. That's not a real name, but I'll just call her Rosie. And um, the first night that she stayed at this foster home, uh, when the, when the care, caretaker came uh, the next morning to wake her up, they discovered the room was covered in Rosie's feces. She'd smeared her poop over the, on the walls of this bedroom. Now, uh, I think probably most parents, most caregivers would have been angry at that. They would have scolded Rosie, uh, said this is totally inappropriate behavior. They may have, would have interpreted it as rebellion or, or, and punished her or whatever. But because of the incarnational philosophy, this team came to this conclusion that if Rosie did this, she must feel some need to do this. There's a reason why she did this. And so they didn't get angry. They got compassionate. And they told Rosie, here's a part of your wall where we'll let you do this. And uh, um, uh, you smear that on there as much as you need to, and in the morning we'll come and we'll clean it up for you. See, they understood that if, if, if Rosie's ever going to get healthy enough to be let go of this behavior, she needs to experience love in the midst of the behavior. Uh, it's like I always say to people that until you can be convinced of, that God loves you perfectly in the midst of all your poop smearing, in the midst of all whatever mess you've made of your life, until you know that God's love for you is perfect in the midst of all your crap, you'll never get out of your crap in a healthy way. It's the love of God that brings about transformation in our life. And, and, and so they loved Rosie as she was, as she continued to, to smear poop on the wall. In time, the, the trust level between Rosie and the staff was great enough so that she shared why she did this. It turns out that Rosie, um, beginning at about the age four, uh, her father would get himself drunk and in the middle of the night come into her room and sexually molest her. And and of course, this went on, on for however long, but at one point, while this was happening, Rosie accidentally defecated. And it so grossed the father out, he left the room. And so little Rosie discovered a way to keep her father off of her. And so at night, she would smear her poop on the wall, and cause it to stink to high heaven so that the father wouldn't come in the room. And, and see, to ordinary people, the smell of, of poop is, is revolting. It, it's, it's unpleasant. It's disgusting. But for, for, for Rosie, uh, that smell, the smell of her poop, was, that's, what, that's what protection smelled like. That, that was the smell of safety. And without that smell, she couldn't go to sleep. Now, if I understand the story right, when the team learned this, um, they said, Rosie... That's smart. That, that was smart. And, and we'd be honored to help you do that. And, and so a, t a member of the team each night would get, put on latex gloves, get on their hands and knees, and help her smear that poop on the wall. And see, in doing that, they were bearing her wound. They were entering into the mess with her. And in doing that, they were expressing their love for her as she is and winning her profound her, her trust. So eventually got to the point where Rosie no longer needed to do that. She trusted that these people love her and are not going to sexually molest her. I think that is a beautiful illustration of what God does for us on Calvary and what God's been doing throughout history. God is a God who's always been willing uh, to enter into our poop smearing. Uh, God's the kind of God who's always been willing to go as far, to step as far as he has to step to enter into exactly where we're at. This is what he does on the cross, and this is what he's been doing throughout, throughout history. He enters into solidarity with our sinful poop smearing and our wounded poop smearing. And that's why God takes on this ugly appearance. He appears in his guilty, revolting way on the cross. That's why he appears in guilty, revolting ways in some of the portraits of God throughout the Bible. 
It, it's not because he is ugly. He's actually beautiful. But he enters into, he enters into the ugliness of the people that he's working with and, and, and bears their sin and therefore takes on an appearance that reflects the ugliness of that sin. He's, he's a God who, who's, out of his love, he enters into revolting beauty. The revolting reflects the character of the people he's working with, but what's beautiful is that God's willing to step into that.